Okay, we are at the fourth quadrant. How do I know? Because I prepared for it. But uh, please bear in mind dalam soalan, dia tak akan beritahu kamu kuadran yang keberapa. Okay, kamu sendiri yang kena tentukan kuadran yang keberapa. Saya mengajar mengikut flow yang mudah difahami. Itu sahaja. Okay. So, how do you determine which quadrant? Step yang pertama adalah find A and B. Dekat mana kedudukan A dan B tersebut? Remember, A adalah real part. Dia dipaksi X. B dipaksi Y. Imaginary part. Itulah argon diagram. Okay. So, now terus je ya. 4 berada di sini. Negatif 4 square root 3 berada di bawah. It's negative. So, it should be at the below part. So, now you buatlah triangle. You buat right angle triangle, okay? Right angle triangle and di dalam, di dalam triangle mesti ada alpha. As I say, dalam triangle mesti ada alpha. Miss, sebab tu ke kena buat triangle? Yes, that is the reason. Kenapa saya sangat suruh buat triangle ni? It's just because Bila you buat triangle You akan nampak Oh ini kuadrat yang pertama Oh ini alpha Aku yang kedua Kuadrat kedua Oh yang ini yang ketiga Dan yang ini yang keempat ha, Bila you buat triangle You akan nampak Alpha tu mudah di dalam triangle. So, it's actually bentuk butterfly. Okay, remember alpha berada di dalam triangle. Senang nampak. Okay, triangle is important actually. Sebab tu lah datangnya tangent tu. It's quite hard to explain. It's, it's a lot to explain. Not that hard actually. So, I don't want to explain much. So, I ask you to memorize. Remember, second step pula, find the alpha. Alpha is equals to tangent. Tangent, kenapa tangent miss? Hafal. Tangent, bukan tangent ya. Tangent inverse. Inverse tangent, shiftan. Okay, tekan kita later, shiftan. B over A, your B is equals to 4 square root 3. Oops, sorry, ada negative. Yang bawah ni, 4. 4 kat kat tinggallah square root 3. Tetapi square root 3 dimoduluskan. Therefore, dia menjadi positif square root 3. So, positif square root 3. You solve it, you akan dapat negatif pi over 3 red. That is your that is your radian. That is your alpha. Remember, alpha baru ya. Bukan theta. Your job right now at the fourth first at the fourth quadrant, you want to find negative angle. Go down. Triangle di bawah. Alpha di bawah. Go down lah. Go down. And this is your theta. Sebab tu lah saya tulis theta is equal to negative alpha. Sebab dia ke bawah. Kenapa negative? It's because bawah ada negative angles. That is the fact. Hafal. This is the fact. Fourth quadrant, theta mesti equals to negative alpha. Hafal. Kenapa negative? Dalam teori mathematics, dalam factual, facts mathematics. Below is negative angles. Above is positive angles. Okay. So now my, my theta dah jadi negative. I'm so happy because I can put it into the polar form later. Right? So... Now, carilah pula modulus Z. And then here is square root 64. Therefore, your R is 8. Final step. Masukkan R, theta dan theta kamu. So, R kamu adalah 8. Theta adalah negative pi over 3. Negative pi over 3. As I said in the previous video, the edited quadrant, you akan nampak negatif. Oh, aku kalau nampak negatif ni, aku terus tahu quadrant ke berapa. Quadrant ke, sama ada quadrant ke 4 ataupun 3. In this case, the angle is very small. So, I 
I straight away know that, oh, this is at the fourth quadrant. Sometimes you can know the answer quite quickly if you really understand it. Okay, so this is the ways, the four steps of finding from Cartesian Z is equals to A plus BI menjadi Z is equals to R times cos plus cos theta plus I sine theta. Which is, this is what I'm talking about. Daripada Cartesian yang very short, short, comel-comel je. Menjadi quite complicated punya pola form. Okay, this is very important in the exam. Alright, in the assignment, this is very, very important. You cannot avoid uh, this pola form punya concept. Please, just follow my four steps here. First is find which quadrant. Second is find the alpha using the tangent using a ten inverse tangent and then third is finding its modulus z ataupun r and the fourth one is write it down into polar form very easy that's all from me goodbye